Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over digital art on a budget for beginners in 2021. This video will benefit people who want to start or dabble in digital art but don't know where to begin. It's important to note that I'm doing this on Adobe Illustrator and as this is a budget tutorial, I'm only going to be using a mouse. No drawing tablets or stylus needed. I don't want to waste your time so I'll give you two samples of what you can expect to accomplish by the end of this video. The first painting I did was of Markiplier and it took me roughly 3 hours. The second is of the late Chester Bennington which took me around 2 hours to make. So if all this looks interesting then let's hop into it. Okay, welcome to my computer. Before we begin I want to let you know that it is important to understand your end goal and the resulting style of art you are going for. Because this is a beginner tutorial, I want you to forget about creating super realistic paintings. You first need to get comfortable with the tools you are using and find your work style. I'm going to be doing a cartoonist or animated look on a real person. The person in question is Ethan Nestor, or as he is most commonly known, as crank gameplays. You can use any reference image you want, just make sure it's of a real person. Okay, step one is to open a new document. I want you to find the print tab and select A4. Under preset details on the right, you can name your document whatever you want and select either portrait or landscape. Choose this based on your reference images orientation. Do not touch any of the other options and hit create. Once this is opened up, I want you to find your reference image and simply drag it into Illustrator. As you can see, Illustrator will load it in for you. Now the next step is to adjust your image to fit your page size. Mine is A4 and I'm hoping yours is as well. And I just want you to stretch your image and fit it to the page. Make sure your image is not too distorted and I'll leave that up to your discretion. I think this will be fine for mine. Alright, now that you have your image into Adobe Illustrator, the next step is to go to the Layers tab and sort out everything you're going to be working with. So the first thing here is you'll see you already have one layer created and that's the layer with this image on it. I'm going to rename mine to reference image. Before we continue, I would just like to make a few adjustments to the reference image so it is easier to work with when we continue. So I'm going to select the image, go to the properties tab, go to opacity and I'm going to reduce it to just under 50%. I'm doing this so that when I draw on top of it, I'm not confused as to which colors and which lines are from the reference image and which is the stuff I'm creating. Okay, if we go back to the layers tab, you'll see that the image display has changed under here as well. That's how you know you're on the right track. Okay, now what I want you to do is create a new layer and that's indicated by this plus option at the bottom of the tab click on create new layer. As you can see another layer has popped up and it's selected above the reference image. I'm going to rename this quickly to sketch outline. This layer is going to be used for creating the outline of my form and going through the minor details and creases in the face and how the person is actually made. But before we get into that we have to create the brush tool to do the job. And an important note to remember and this is vital to prevent stupid mistakes make sure you're working under the sketch outline tab here and make sure it's the highlighted blue that's how you know that that's the tab you're working with another thing to remember is the reference image is not going to be edited much the only time we're ever going to edit it is when we have to increase or decrease the opacity just to make things easier to work with while we're doing the drawing so for now i'm going to lock it and what this means is it cannot be moved it cannot be edited and it cannot move in place move around places i'm going to reselect sketch outline and now i want you to find the ellipse tool you can press l on your keyboard or you can find it by this icon on the left here select it and I want you to draw an ellipse over your image and try and create it as fine as you possibly can. And we are doing this to create the brush tool that we're going to be using. Since we are not using a stylus, we're using a mouse. And an important thing to remember is your fill and your stroke options before we continue. I'm going to be, this is an outline, so I'm going to be doing all black. So my stroke is going to be black and the fill is going to be black for me as well. You can use whatever you're comfortable with or whatever it is you're going for. So now that we've got this black ellipse on the page, I want you to zoom in and try and make this as close to a stylus pen stroke 
as you can and to do that we first have to zoom in so to do that you can press the alt key, key on your keyboard and use the scroll wheel on your mouse and you'll zoom in next select the ellipse and as you can see i'm at 800 percent zoomed in and i want you to make this narrower and i'm going to zoom in again to about 1200 maybe 1600 and just make this thinner again the end goal here is to make sure that the end is sharp once we have this make sure that the ellipse is still selected next go to your brushes tab as you can see there are a whole load of brushes tab pre made and the basic generic what we're going to do is go for a new brush so go to the bottom and select new brush as you can see a new tab pops up and you have the option of a calligraphic brush scatter brush art brush bristle brush and pattern brush we're going to be selecting art brush and select ok what this is doing is basically it's scanning the ellipse tool we've created and it's going to create an art brush based off of that as the base template so the top here you can name your art brush whatever you want so i'm just going to rename mine to art brush once that's done do not touch any other options and click ok okay now under your brushes tab you'll see that the new brush has been created and it's named as what i've named it i've named my art brush and there it is now to check that if it's worked make sure you're under the correct layer I can't stress that enough minus sketch outline and go to your paintbrush tool and on the keyboard it's B and to see that it's worked I want you to just zoom in and try and create one or two lines and for me it's worked and just have a look at what my line looks like if it looks something like this then it's worked for you as well okay now that we have the tool we can get rid of the ellipse that we've created it's no longer needed and the first step is to create like i've said the sketch outline of our form with the paintbrush tool still selected go to the properties tab and now this is where you want to pay careful attention the brush setting we're using is still our art brush just make sure that that's there and go to the stroke point one point is going to be a little too thick for the outline that we're going for unless you're creating a specific style in which one point is good for you then stay with it but for me i'd for outlines and details i like to use 0.25 you can go thicker it's all based on your discretion but 0.25 works best for me so with that selected i'm going to deselect the full option it was usually set on black i'm going to remove it and i want to only have the stroke set as black because it's a sketch so now using the mouse i'm simply going to zoom in and i like to start with the eyes this is a little bit of a more difficult image than the last two that i've created that i've shown you in the preview because this person has glasses on and if i zoom in it's not not that easy to see but we'll make do with what we have so with 0.25 selected i'm simply going to draw the outline of the eye it should come out something like that yours should look something similar to this again i've said this a lot now it's your up to you on what art style you're going for like i said mine is to and like the animated cartoonist look so this works best another thing to keep in mind is you are a beginner so don't be too harsh on yourself we are still learning and you're trying to develop your own skill and your own confidence i'm also still learning i'm nowhere near perfect so i'm also going to make some errors along the way but i mean errors like this add a little character to your artwork you don't want nerd machine type artworks that create 100 percent perfect artworks because it's just boring all right i got one eye down i'm going to move on to the next eye okay now that i've got the next eye down I'm basically going to repeat the same process through the nose, the mouth, the shape of the face and I'm going to give, get the basic outline of the hair, the ears and the body and whatever else I'm going to be including in the picture frame. So here's a quick time lapse of that now.
you have the outline done, you should end up with something like this. Something I forgot to mention before I started this time lapse is what points I'm going to be using. Like I said, I was going to be using 0.25 point under the stroke here, but for things like the glasses, frame, and the shirt, I used 0.5. Just a little thicker pen stroke just to make things a little bit different so it's not all one size and one layer so they start to stand out a little bit in comparison with each other like i said before this is a cartoonist style so i'm not going to go into too much detail like with the hair i'm not going into every single strand and i'm not going for perfectionist route so i have left out one or two minor details here and there but now that we have the sketch outline done now we can get started with color and getting more vibrancy into this work but before we do that, just check that all, that you have all your lines down, go back to the layers tab, select your reference image and it'll see it will be highlighted in blue and select this toggle visibility option and that's indicated by this eye. If you click it, it you've basically just hidden the reference image. Now have a look at your sketch that's above it. Do you see everything that you want there? Is there anything missing? Do you want to add anything? Now's your chance to do it. And if you're happy with what this looks like in comparison to your reference image, then you're on the right track and we can move forward. If not, just correct one or two details. You can pause my video and come back to it when you're done. But for the people who are ready, let's move on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a new layer. As you can see, it's been created here at the top called layer three. I'm going to lock the sketch outline and I'm going to bring it to the top. Just select it and drag it to the top. So as you can see, the sketch outline now is the, the highest layer on top of everything. Now layer three, I'm going to label, I'm gonna label it ba the base color layer. In this layer, we're basically just going to get the basic skin tone and the basic colors and just lay them out on top of the picture just to get the first layer down. Then once that's done, we're gonna add another layer and we're going to add the secondary layer of colors and then you'll see how all of it blends together to create the final image. So let's continue. Make sure your base color layer is selected and now what we're going to do is we're going to create another brush type. This is very important so pay careful attention. With the base layer color layer selected, go to brushes and we're going to select a new brush. Now what we're going to be doing is, as you can see, art brush is, is not an option, scatter brush is not an option and that's fine. We're going to be creating a calligraphic brush and we're doing this so we're basically creating a paintbrush that we can use to just paint over and it's not actually like a stroke brush where it's a little more controlled and refined with this we can go a little more crazy so with calligraphic brush selector i'm going to select ok and i'm just going to rename this to full brush you can name it whatever you want so long as it's easily found and for you and then don't touch any other option and then select ok now with that selected if you go back to your brushes tab here as you can see it should already be selected but if not you can just basically hover your mouse over the options and find the one that you've named as your full brush and i'm just going to double click it make sure yep that's the right one now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the layers tab i'm going to go to the base reference image i'm going to unlock it i'm going to go back and go to the selection tool or type v on your keyboard I'm going to select the reference image, go to properties and I'm going to increase the opacity to 100%. I'm doing this so I can get the base color layers. So basically what we're going to do is take the eyedropper tool, I'm going to select it here and I'm going to just find the optimal skin color for Ethan here. So I think this color works best for me. You should do the same for your reference image as well. Just play around with it and see what works best for you. Okay. I Thing, this should be good and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna lock the reference image i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lower the opacity because it's going to be counterproductive because i'm going to be coming back here again for the hair the glasses and everything else so just lock that so we don't mess that layer up go back to the base color layer i'm going to hide the reference image and i'm going to go to my paintbrush tool go to properties make sure that my full brush is selected i'm going to go here to my left and i'm going to basically take that eyedropper color and put it into the stroke and i'm going to cancel the full we don't want to full now that that's done go back to properties because we have the sketch outline set above the base color layer i can go wild on this 
just making sure I don't go into the background but I can go wild on the image and I'll worry about overlapping onto details because this outline will still appear above the color so that said I'm gonna get to work here's another time lapse coming your way oh before I do carry on I just want to show that okay look this color is a bit bleak I know we use the eyedropper tool to try and be as realistic as we can with the reference image as you can see here but as a skin tone and as a cartoonist look, it's kind of not going to make my character look like a dead zombie. So I'm just going to increase this color and play around a little bit, but you can do whatever you want for yours. And back to the time lapse. Okay, at this point in the video, I just want to pause here and I just want to make something known to you that not all places will be easily accessible with the lowest point, which is 0.25, like here, the ends of the hair. As you can see, if I try to do this, it's going to go over and it's going to spill into the background. So to fix this, the other tool you can use is the pen tool, all right? Select the pen tool and make sure all the options are still the same. You're on stroke. And what you want to do is basically invert this uh, from the paintbrush tool so we're going to flip this so instead of stroke being activated we're going to activate the full and we're going to deselect the stroke so if i select this i'm going to take this and i'm going to drag it into the full area and from the stroke i'm going to deselect that what we're going to do is we're just going to select the areas where we can't reach and illustrator should fill in those points for us as you can see there's a quick solution to what could be a very big problem if you don't know how to handle it Okay, now we've got all the base layers down and as you can see it's starting to look much better but it's still incomplete we still need to add the next layer and that's where it gets a little bit challenging because we're going to be mainly using the pen tool and the curve pen tool but don't let it overwhelm you I'll show you exactly how to do it and with a little bit of practice you'll eventually get it right so now we're gonna come back to the layers tab I'm going to lock the base color layer I'm going to bring back the reference image and then I'm going to create another layer 
and I'm gonna name this layer color over layer one now we can hide the base color layer because we're going to be working with the shadows in the figure and all the darker tones where all light hits Ethan in the hair on the shoulder and everywhere else the first thing we want to do is I usually start off with the skin because it's the eat well it's the hardest part and once it's out of the way everything else sort of falls in place so I'm just gonna zoom in I'm gonna select the reference image I'm gonna unlock it I'm gonna get the eyedropper tool and I'm just gonna find a nice dark shade to work with that we can use throughout the skin remember you don't want to make it too dark but you also don't want to make it too light you want to find that in between value because if it's too dark the contrasts are gonna pop out way too much i think this color is fine all right now that you've got your color sorted i want you to select your color overlay one and then go to your pen tool and now i'm gonna start here off here at the top and work my way down we have our sketch outline as a guideline for us to start off with so you basically just want to select all the lines and what I'm planning to do is go all the way around like this and then I'm going to wrap all the way up like this coming up. It may sound absurd now but wait until the end result it looks pretty cool as you've seen in the two examples I gave you at the start of the video and time skip. Okay it's at this point where we're going to want to use the curvature line tool because we don't want the shadow to look angular and all jaggedy and all out of place we want it to sort of have a nice curve and smooth effect it's not going to be as perfect as you would be using a stylus and a drawing tablet but remember this is a budget beginner drawing so for what we've got i think it's pretty good so i'm going to select the curvature tool and what i'm going to do is just carry on selecting the outlines but this time what you'll see happening is instead of having straight lines you now have curves and you can play with them as you want we've got this block over here and the nice thing with the pen tool that the brush tool doesn't have is now that we've got this layer now i can bring back base color so you can see what you're working with that does look a little bit too harsh so what i'm going to do is go to the properties tab and now we can actually play with the opacity and this is a bit cool because now we can sort of make it work however we please. You see the difference between this full 100%. This contrast is a bit too much and it pops out way too much and it doesn't look as realistic. But if we use the opacity, we can, we can make it more subtle. And you should end up with something like this. The reason why I didn't show you the whole speed paint was because it would waste your time because most of it was repetition. And secondly because I gave you the tools on how to do it and I wanted you to explore and try it for yourself and get comfortable looking at your own work instead of always referring to mine. Like I said this won't be perfect because there are one or two rough edges but I like them because it adds character to my work. But that was the tutorial, here's the proof that you can create cool digital art on a budget even if you are a beginner. If you liked it, please consider subscribing, leaving a like and dropping a comment. You can always unsubscribe at any point if you don't like my work. But that's all from me today, see you in the next video.